So today we're going to take a look at the importance of the hip movement in your downswing and most important we're going to take a look at what is the uniqueness of your body and how we can utilize what your strength is from the hips or, and correlate that to a movement pattern and any swing problems you may have. Let's jump inside and take a look at how we can help that you with your game. Having a look at your hips in the downswing and how they function to create the golf swing that's right for you in terms of getting your body more open, do you need to get a bit more lateral, or do you need to apply that vertical force which is therefore going to give you the speed. But obviously we've all got our own way of being predisposed to move, whether it is having our own personalised power programme from the ground, which we're all individuals, so that's where it's gonna come from. So we're gonna actually go into that in quite a lot of detail in a future video, but talking predominantly about how the hips are gonna work. So my golf swing, I struggle a little bit by not necessarily getting off the right side that well. So that is actually the internal rotation of the hip here, not being able to turn it through and get that right knee being able to move through and getting off the ball. If you're somebody who really struggles getting open with the hip, i.e. opening that left side and rotating these hips so that they would be open at the point of impact here that can be linked to the external rotation of the hip joint because what these things are going to do is these are what are going to allow you to either make sure that you can get the compression so you're getting the weight shift over the left side so you can hit down on the ball enough which is going to create the shaft lean so this is going to be a little bit of the horizontal so we're actually getting a bit of lateral shift and how that right hip is going to be able to internally rotate in this direction therefore we've got the hands forwards at impact the external rotation so just the turning of that left hip can be what's going to allow you to get more open getting that weight shifting back and therefore seeing that the club can work more around with you as you're able to turn and pivot around that left side so that's what's going to be key for that now in terms of how we all move we're all going to move slightly differently from one another and it's not necessarily going to be about just being able to apply a swing change okay it's going to be about having the right one for your body and how you can create this sort of multifaceted approach where you are able to look at what you could do at home from stretching or even in the gym or strength how you can then apply that at home and then lastly how you can then take that from the practice ground to the golf course where it's all about the performance and being able to apply whatever it is that you need. So first thing is, how do you ascertain whether you can't get off the right foot through it just being a habit or whether it is a physical restriction or whether you can't open the left up is to be able to use a simple test. So we're gonna jump through here now and have a look at this really easy drill or easy test that will show us how those hips can rotate and how you can see which one you are predisposed to be weaker at. So I've got these two discs on the floor here. These are called a Rotex. So these will be able to test the hip movement. So get the left foot on the disc and the right foot. Then what I'm gonna do is keep my back against the wall here, head against it, lower back is hollow, arms out, now I'm gonna rotate the feet outwards. So if I just glance down there, rotate it out, I'm nearly 60 degrees in um, external rotation with both. We have a look at internal rotation there. I'm 30, just, just in the 30s there on the right, and I'm in the 40s on the left. Now, that's a lot better for me on the right hand side, but ideally that wants to be a minimum of 40 degrees. So what that is showing is that I've either got a bit of tightness in the, around the ankle joint or in that internal hip rotation range. Now, if you don't have anything like this to use, link below is the TPI test. Okay, you can do that at home. Go on there, and it's also in there is a link for a couple of other videos that's just showing you how important the hips are to making sure that you are predisposed to make the right movement and how you can work around it. Now, I'm going to jump over to a guy on Instagram called Ando PFS. Andy Hannon, he is going to show you a really simple drill to help you get more flexibility from internal and external rotation. What's up, Dan? Here's those two stretches that you wanted, internal rotation, external rotation of the hip. I kind of like to use something where I can get active and then actively out of that. I'm not looking to really to do a stretch because that's really not going to benefit anybody. So if I'm 
laying on the ground, I wanna find either a doorway or something like this. So I'll do internal rotation first. I wanna be flat on the ground. Okay, I wanna push this foot into the structure. So I get active in my adductors and I'm gonna pull away. So usually what helps is to kind of grab underneath this leg, okay? Then pull that hip into internal rotation. Back on, push inside for like five, 10 seconds. This back is flat, rotate out, okay, back on. So really what's gonna happen, a lot of people might feel a cramping sensation. Since their nervous system kind of freaking out because they're not used to that range of motion, that's a lot more effective than just trying to do a stretch. Think same thing, but you're thinking opposite, right? For external rotation. So if I'm going this way, <clears throat> now my lateral side, I'm gonna push into the structure, push in, so I'm pushing that way, and I'm just gonna pull my hip into an external rotation. So that range a little bit better for me. Back on, push, then back flat. Actually rotate the hip, back on. There's a little bit more active way to do it. Again, people can use the doorway, or if they have something like this outside, I'd benefit from that. I'd do that, you know, if someone really has limitation, like two times a day, 10 reps each, if they really want to see change. So a big thank you to Ando for doing that for us. Now, Ando is someone I found on Instagram. His exercise has been really useful and something that I've applied to a lot of my own workouts. I really would recommend jumping over on his Instagram. He's got some great stuff on there that will be able to help you move better as a golfer because he looks at a lot of movement training, which really does help that golf swing. Now, what we could look at is, first of all, is something that you can do at home. First thing you want to look at is how you can work at your stance. Now, the stance, people often sort of misunderstand a little bit. What we're looking at here is how the feet flare in different directions. So what we think about is the right foot. Let's say that I struggle for external rotation, which is loading the hips in the backswing. I probably have that foot a little bit more flared. If I struggle to get off the right side, which is I've always been a little bit flat footed, which goes back to the tightness in here. What we'd want to do is square that foot off because I can still load the pelvis backwards, but it's gonna give me a much greater chance of being able to get over because that's an easier movement to make with a squarer foot, a flared out foot, that's really hard to do and I feel quite stuck. So that's the first one. Then the other one would be if you struggle getting open with the hips, okay, what we want to look at is flaring the foot a little bit more because that encourages the rotation and it encourages you to get more around that leg because what can happen is the ankle can rotate as can the knee and you can push back so that's going to be absolutely vital for you so this would also just want to make sure is that you can still rotate this hip enough in the backswing to help load this right glute whilst keeping that knee a little bit more solid. So what you could do at home is to ascertain which stance is for you. Quite simply, get your golf club across your hips here and just start to work at making sure that you know, experiment with the foot flare. So let's say that you have both here and see that, can I keep that in? Okay, whoop, whoop, that left leg's nice and solid. Yes, I've loaded in the right glute, but on the way through from there, okay, I can see how the foot's already spinning around a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, where it's finished there on the spin, I'm just gonna make sure it's in this position. Go back, and then as I go around again, make sure I can finish into a position here with the weight in that left heel, right knee's touching the left knee, and I can see that that's the right position for my foot. So now what I can then work at is, as I'm making my downswing, is making sure that I can feel how once I'm getting through the ball, that the right knee can move into the side of the left knee. We don't want that right knee going forwards in this direction, because if it's going forwards, it's going to get you stuck underneath the shot and that's going to get you a little bit flippy through impact, which we don't want. So the knees track in towards one another. So if I load back here, if I keep this in this direction, the club, what we'd see is as I make the movement, you want it to go that way. You don't want that knee to invade the space here and the weight going up on the toe. That ankle will roll. So there, if that, how that ankle can roll will be directly linked to how much internal rotation you've got. 
So that's a great drill for you to be able to do at home just to ascertain what the feet are doing. Also, what you can do is just simply putting a club across your body like this and making sure that you've got a dead simple pivot drill so you can get the feeling of how you can load the pelvis properly, keep the knees solid, and then get the feeling of how that body can rotate through more into a golf swing position. So these are two really good things to, I would always advise all year round, just do a little bit of dry lamp work like this, is guaranteeing that your body is working really well. Now, let's jump outside and have a look what you would do on the practice ground or the driving range, and a really easy drill that you can start to employ to have a look at how you can get the hips more open or get more off that right side. So if you're out here on the practice ground or on the driving range, what you want to be able to do is have a couple of little simple things that can help you get a feeling for this movement, which will encourage you to make the foot movement and the hip movement in the direction that's correct for you. So firstly, let's have a look at what you could do if you are working at making sure you're getting off the right foot. So what you do with this is, once you've got yourself into the position to go here, you'll get the right, you'll get a stick that will be angled, will go on the foot, be in the middle of the right foot here. So this allows you to get the feeling of moving across and um, away from that stick. So that's going to encourage the foot to roll across and to get that hip rotating more internally. So this will just give me the feeling of making sure it stays solid through the inside of that right ankle going back and then really just encouraging me to, to get more off that right side through impact. So just giving this a little go right here. So I could really feel that with that stick there, it made me have to get much more across and over and off that right foot a lot more through impact. So it's a really good drill for me, or if you're struggling to get off that right side through impact, it's a great drill for you. Now, what we've got here is, having a look at it from another type of player, is if you end up struggling not opening enough, I've got half a tennis ball cut up. So what I do is get myself into where I'd be comfortable. I'm going to put that underneath the forefoot. So what I do is, if you don't get that hip to open enough this way, you'll use this as a almost like a counter pressure movement. So what you'll do is as you're going back, you'll push into this ball, going back, and then what you'll do is as you push down on it, you can't go any further forward. So then you'll let the weight jump back from it, which will give you the feeling of opening up more through impact. So using this to feel like you are really pushing down, pushing down on a transition and letting that hip open up through impact. So for me there, I could really feel how that encouraged my hip to jump back. My weight was massively in the heel at the end of the follow through. So it's something that I'd really encourage you to try and do. If that's something that you struggle with, getting that hip open, it's a great way to get the feeling of being much more open. Or if you struggle getting off the right side, use the alignment stick. Now let's have a quick look at how you can apply this into your pre-shot routine on the golf course to help you play better golf. So in situ here on the tee, what we're going to have a look at is how can you apply this into your pre-shot routine so it doesn't become something you have to think about technically over the ball, but it's something you can rehearse before you hit a ball. So for me, what I'd be doing is with me struggling a little bit with the right, making sure that I've got that foot nice and square, is at the top of the backswing as I'm making the movement through, getting the feeling of that foot moving across and rolling and really getting the feeling of how that right knee tracks into the side of the left knee and therefore I can feel how that right foot is rolling across a lot more and I'm getting more off it through the ball. If you struggle with making sure that you don't get open enough what I'd encourage you to do is to exaggerate this in your pre-shot routine is as you start down feel the toes coming up on the left foot because if the toes jump up in the air you can't do anything else other than open the hips up. Now it's obviously an extreme position because you can't hold your balance but it's teaching you where that weight is going to go. So what I do is, for me, I'd get the feeling of how that right knee is coming through the shot, getting a feel for it, then go through your normal pre-shot routine, picking out your intermediate target, getting it into over the ball, making sure I get that feeling of what I want to do before it, feel pretty comfortable here, and then just 
commit to the outcome of the shot. So that one there worked out pretty solid for me. I'm going to go off and finish this hole of golf. I'll talk with you again really soon on something else where we're going to apply the concept of other areas of the game, have a look at any physical restrictions. And if you've enjoyed this type of content to do with instruction, comment below. If there's something else you struggle with and you'd like us to have a look at it, comment below, let us know, and I'll talk with you again really soon.